everyone, this is FDL, and I'm back with a very special uh, Lance deck deck. Uh, this is the, f the fabled Knight of Unaxio combo deck. It plays like nothing you've played in Shadow Era, and it's a lot of fun, and it's even quite good. Um, so basically the point of this deck, um, okay, the, the deck deck might be a little confused because it's a <laughs> it's gonna. It's, it, there are many parts in this deck, and they don't make a lot of sense individually, and they really need to come together to uh, uh, to perform any kind of interesting tricks. So basically, you want to play Knight of Unaxio, a three-five for four that has an ability to discard an ability from your hand. So once per turn, you can discard an, an ability from your hand, and buff knight by plus two plus two so you want to attack with knight for five seven nine and nine so if you counted quickly that was 30 points of damage enough to kill uh, any non-armored uh, and non-healing hero uh, and if needed you can of course do uh, more than that and to do that because knight is the only ally in the deck and in most games, you're only going to play one of them. And to dodge all the removal that's running around in Shadow Era, we have Lalo. <clears throat> so that's a 3-cost ability uh, from the Rogue class that hides your hero and allies. So hidden means they can be targeted and... Uh, yeah, they can be attacked, they can be targeted by abilities. And... Um, it's a pretty powerful keyword that's not used on a lot of cards. Uh, the most famous one is Into the Forest with Gwen. Uh, but this affects your whole board. So there was a a very old deck based around Lalo. I mean, uh, Kevin, that you might know if you frequent the forums, he posts a lot of very creative decks. And he had one in Colored Crystals where we would play weenies and then hide them with Lalo uh, to win the game. But Shatter Fates brought us Knight of Unaxio, and that has... At least I think it's... A, is it a Shatter Fates card? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> and that transformed the Lalo deck. But Lalo, it only lasts until the end of your next turn. So... You get to, to be hidden during your opponent's uh, turn, but then you can't attack during your own turn, and you can't play a second Lalo, to uh, keep being hidden. So you actually need Shrine of Negasha, which bounces an item or support ability that costs four or less to your hand, or to its controller's hand, rather. So, um, you need to have one Lalo and two or three Shrines in your hand to protect your knight while he attacks. Um, so usually, the combo lasts you need three turns. So you haste the... Uh, and you, you start on seven resources. So you haste the Knight of Inaxio, uh, buff him once, attack for five, then you lay low. When you get the, the turn back, you shrine the lay low, buff the Knight again, he's now a seven nine. You attack for seven, uh, that's 12 total. Lay low again, and then Shrine again next turn, buff the knight to 9-11, uh, attack, uh, attack for 9, which brings you to 21 points of damage, and then you want to play a uh, Justicar's Cape, which is a new armor from Fates. Um, it costs 3, has 3 durability, 1 armor, but that's not really relevant here. And it allows you to discard an ability from your hand, to uh, ready a friendly Templar ally. So, you, you just attack for 9 with Knight, discard a card to the Cape, ready Knight again, and attack for 9 again. And you can even buff him once more if you need to deal uh, extra damage. So if you counted right, there was 1 Knight, 1 Lalo, 2 Shrines, and uh, 1 Just a Curse Cape. That's the minimum uh, of cards you're gonna need to uh, perform your kill. Um, <laughs> obviously, this deck has some very glaring weak weaknesses. Uh, like if 
your opponent has a way to destroy Lalo. <laughs> like focused prayers or shriek of vengeance are probably the most common. Um, but I've played dozens of games with this deck in the last weeks and I've yet to see a single Shriek of Vengeance. So it looks like it's a good time in the <laughs> in the meta to be playing this uh, this deck. Um, there's also a lack of priests right now and priests are like an auto loss. They have focused prayer to uh, destroy your Lalo and they have Tidal Wave which is a non-targeted removal that kills your uh, <clears throat> your knight and on top of that if you're playing against Shanna she can heal a lot so <laughs> yeah yeah there's no way to win against a uh, a Janna with this deck uh, yeah Shriek of Vengeance is annoying and it's that's also a nodal loss but right now it's nowhere to be seen so <laughs> we're gonna abuse it um, then you also have uh, Sorcerer of Vendia and uh, Rapacious Vermin, which allow your opponent to destroy uh, one of your items or abilities if you can control uh, at least three of them. And that's why in most games you're only going to play uh, Cape on the turn you kill your opponent. So you don't want to have a Bazaar, a Loom of Fate, and a Cape, and a a Lalo in play at the same time because then you're there they can target it with uh, Sorcerer of India. Vermin is not really common and uh, but India is played in a lot of victors uh, some Serenas. Then if we go <laughs> continue going down the list of things that kill this deck uh, you have Overwhelm that's very annoying um, what's the other one? Well, there are, there, are, there are a lot of annoying things like Dead Traps, Ricochet Traps, uh, Ankle Breakers, um, the Black Garb Armor. Um, those are pretty hard to kill, but you can play around them. Brax Soldier that removes haste, uh, that's pretty easy to play around. Um, but the big ones, yeah, they're, it's Tidal Wave, uh, well, Priest in general, Shriek of Vengeance and uh, Sorcerer of India that you have to look out for. Uh, Moonstalker is obviously hard. Yeah, f because of the stealth, but mostly because of Overwhelm. Um, yeah, so we've talked about the weakness and we have six cards to deal with them. I have two Stop Thieves and <clears throat> one Anarchic Looting. Um, Stop Thief is pretty good to, like in general, if your opponent plays an item on turns uh, 2 or 3 or 4, uh, Amber plays a Jeweler's Dream or something like that, uh, you want to Stop Thief it just to accelerate your plan by one turn. Because you, you, well, you can go off before uh, getting 7 resources, but pretty much every single hero has a uh, spot removal that can kill or uh, cripple your knight, so you don't really want to live him exposed if possible. Mages are a bit of an exception here because um, on turn f 4 or 5 they have um, what's it called? Um, the transmog curse and potentially um, the consuming fear, but they're not widely played and if you have a certain hand you can try to uh, hasten one night see if they have the removal if they don't then you can win in a turn or two uh, and if they do well you just recharge and wait uh, to go with um, uh, Lalo cover Anarchic Looting is pretty sweet uh, you can go through multiple traps uh, black garbs ankle breakers uh, it's I've I've blown out opponents that think they were thought they were really safe. If you're against an ankle breaker, um, don't forget that your ability, the lance's ability, also gives ambush. So uh, you can actually bypass the weapon, just buff your knight until it has uh, uh, like seven or nine attack. Then uh, 
you can make a one turn kill with two capes. So yeah, you can attack for 9, 9 and 9, uh, which gives you 27 points of damage. Or 9, 11, 11, if, uh, if you need to. Um, so yeah, there are a lot of little tricks to pick up. This is a very, uh, at least for me, it was a very hard deck to learn. I felt like such a noob in the, fir the first time. I've been playing this game for four years and I made the most terrible mistakes playing this deck in the first like 20 or 25 games that I used it. Playing Lalos before attacking, uh, miscalculating damage, um, <laughs> not destroying the right targets with stop thieves and looting. Um, at first I had only lootings and no stop thieves, but uh, in this thread on that on the deck, uh, Rivas mentioned how stop thief and acceleration was was important, and I think he's right. Um, then the other anti-weakness <laughs> card, if you will, is Sanctuary. Um, actually, those three cards have fluctuated a lot. This slot here, um, for some time it was Payday, because I thought if I could, um, you know, I'm giving my opponents a lot of cards and we're going to go to the draw in a moment, but it involves bilateral draw, and I thought I might be able to uh, make them discard uh, tidal waves or whatnot, but it was terrible. Like I didn't have a single good discard in like the ten games I played with Payday. So now I'm on Sanctuary. I haven't played a whole lot of games with that, but it seems like you no, know, it can gives you it it can give you two turns uh, against Moonstalker to attack through stealth. And it can also um, attack, um, yeah, Gravebone. Gravebone is a bit of a problem because uh, the Krat goes through uh, Smokescreen, which I haven't talked about yet, but... And that's a bit annoying, and if I can just delay him a bit with Sanctuary, that would be swell. Um, but you should potentially use that against... Um, Victor and try to go for an early kill, but I don't think it's worth it. Victor is easy anyway. Um, who else is annoying ability? Well, Terra Dune, but we never see him. Um, oh yeah, that's mostly Moonstalker and Gravebone um, <laughs> tech. But um, yeah, I mean, the deck is good enough to win without. Like, whatever you play here. I tried Coercion for a bit. Um, trying to steal my opponent's allies, hit them uh, with their own guys so that I can get a, a slightly quicker um, clock. Didn't work that well. It wasn't necessary. So yeah, it's, it's like a 36 card deck. 37 with the hero and then 40 with whatever you choose to play here. Could be more draw. Um, could be an extra bazaar. But you want to keep the non-ability count very low. Um, might be my rain delay might be relevant here if you want to stall a little bit more. Uh, you can get another looting or another uh, stop thief in there. So this is pretty open. But f right now it's uh, sanctuary. Um, okay, smoke screen. That's my second stall. That's, this is like the mid-game transition. You want to get your draw going early, then play a couple of smoke screen to bring you to turn 7, and then combo on turn 7 with lay low backup. Um, so yeah, which brings me to the draw. Um, what I like about this deck is that it doesn't lose to itself a lot. I mean, you rarely uh, miss uh, your key cards because you see so many of them. Games only last like nine turns, but you go like through 30, 35 cards every game. Um, that's that's because of Bad Santa, Bazaar, Loom of Fate, and uh, Word of the Word of the Prophet. Um, I started without Word, and but Rivos uh, correctly identified this as a very key card. Um, it gives you 
such great card selection and on turn one if you don't have a bazaar luma fate or a bad santa if you're going first uh you always uh word aggressively to look for your draw engine um so yeah you want to have a bazaar or a loom uh in play at first i had four looms uh four bazaars and i hated loom even though i played two of them um and it, uh, I'm still not sure. Now I'm on full loom and just one bazaar. Because, um, let's say the, the dream is you go turn one, loom of fate, turn two. Also having four looms and four uh, word of the prophet gives you great odds to pull a uh, Santa bomb on turn, one, on turn two. So yeah, the dream you go turn one, loom, turn two, bad Santa, turn three, uh play nothing or play a cape just to make room in your hand uh, turn four five, turn four uh, you, depending on how many damage your uh, damage potential your opponent has on the board you might play nothing then turn five you you go smoke screen draw from loom uh, smoke screen draw from loom and turn six then you combo off the thing with bazaar is that it gives a lot of cards to your opponent and on the turns you play smokescreen your hand uh, you're gonna have six cards in hand play smokescreen go back to six cards and then um, give you, you know you, you you won't draw a card from bazaar but you're gonna give one to your opponent so if you have loom of fate on those on those turns that you have uh, six cards when you play um, smokescreen you're not giving anything away to your opponent. Um, I, I'm not even sure that's relevant because once you start going off, you're gonna be playing bad Santa, so you're gonna fill your opponent's hand anyways. And um, yeah, at that point, I don't think it matters if they drew the extra cards on turn five and six, or and then they have a full hand, so they draw less from your bad Santa, or. Uh, it's pretty close either way but you can only play one of those unless you're absolutely sure that your opponent does not play vermin or uh, in uh, sorcerer which is you know a, a safe assumption against a lot of decks but you don't need both so um, generally just one is okay and uh, just be careful against decks that have uh, stop thieves or uh, that can kill your draw because your opponents can correctly uh, identify that uh, you're a combo deck which I, I still have a lot of comments that this deck is uh, uh, new for a lot of my opponents but uh, which may which has me a bit surprised because I thought it was a pretty well-known deck but yeah you're not gonna get fool them twice <laughs> but the good thing is that you can play, you can win against opponent that know exactly uh, what you're up to. Don't need to. It's not a cheap gimmick deck that you need to uh, full take your opponent by surprise. Um, you do need to play it in a good meta game that does not uh, threaten Lalo too much, though. Um, I think that was that was everything. Um, right now I have that's 4, 12, 13 cards that aren't abilities, and I wouldn't go any higher. Um, it's rarely a problem, but sometimes it comes up. But like I said, I rarely, rarely lose to myself. Uh, if I lose, it's because uh, my opponent has a counter to uh, <laughs> Lalo or a non-targeted removal for uh, Knight of Unaxio. Um, all right, so that was the deck deck. Um, gonna come back with a couple of uh, of games and show you how it's done. <laughs>